Hi, Jim Gordon back with another Small Cap Interviews. You can see all of them at smallcapinterviews.com. Joining us is a gentleman I haven't talked to in a number of years, but he is back. Tom Yingling is the president and CEO of Green Battery Minerals. Tom, welcome back. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure Good to be back you. again. Good tie, too. Well, you Very know. nice. <laughs> green, green. Hey, lots to talk about. I, I was really excited to talk to you again uh, when I saw you were on the board of people to interview because I, I think this story is great. It's timely. And there's a number of things that are concerning to me that you guys are trying to uh, work on in terms of what is going on in the world right now. Let's talk, just give us a brief uh, background on Green Battery Minerals. Sure. Uh, thanks again for having me. You're quite welcome. Uh, green Battery Minerals is involved in the exploration in Canada and we're trying to develop and explore for the critical minerals that are used in lithium ion batteries. Mm -hmm. Of course, obviously, there a lot of those are used in the electric vehicles, and as we see the the world more and more going towards electrification and electric cars becoming more and more popular, the demand is going to surge, particularly for a local source, which is where we are. We are in northern Canada, and, and specifically, you've got a great location in the province of Quebec. Tell us more about that, as well as the the infrastructure in this great area. Oh, I've in in my thirty years of exploring, I've been all over the world, and I've never found a, a jurisdiction that's as good as Quebec. Oh, okay, yeah. for for so many reasons, and some of them I wasn't even aware of until I started to work there. Um, the infrastructure is amazing. You can literally fly to Montreal, rent a car, drive not just near a property, but to it, get out of the truck, and yeah. you're standing on graphite. So the, the, the economics of that are staggering. The infrastructure, once again, with the roads in place, they're everywhere. Right. Because they have such phenomenal hydroelectric dams that are th located throughout the province, which they need all year round access to, what they call the electric highway, right. because they have to access the dams. Yeah. And they have it all year round. So we get to drive on these roads all year round. And not only that, we get greener, cleaner hydroelectric power. That's also, as a bonus, more affordable. Uh, let's. Uh, we're going to talk a little more green in a sure. second. I'm just uh, sticking with location. Obviously, a very good location, as you said. Uh, talk about some of your neighbors, and I would assume that the uh, big companies have uh, uh, come a calling uh, <laughs> in terms of what you guys and some of your uh, neighbors are doing. Thank you. Um, without sounding so cliche, but it really works in this situation say 30 years of doing this, the best place to find a mine is in the shadow of head frames. Yeah. And what that basically means is where there's one mine, there's often another because it's, it's already proven that the geology and everything else is in place for the perfect conditions because let's be honest, mines are rare. Yeah. So if one's there, chances are there's another. So in our case, we're right contiguous and share border with a company called Nouveau Mon and they have a very good graphite resource. They have roughly a $3.6 billion NPV, which they just recently put out. Mm -hmm. um, and they also uh, have a deal with Panasonic. And so uh, it makes sense, obviously. And, and is that obviously the direction you guys want to go? Uh, have you had suitors, for lack of a better word, that don't need to be named? But <laughs> have, have you had that conversation? We've had conversations with, with many groups, yeah. yeah. And we're just trying to figure out which one might fit the the right piece of puzzle. And, and talk about specifically uh, your Berkwood graphite property. Can you give us a little background on that? Sure. It's uh, once again located in northern Quebec, a little over 11,000 hectares, um, comprised of about 12 or so different properties. Um, some of them have, are at various different exploration stages. We do have a 43-101 resource estimate on our what we call zone number one, and that's where we've done a majority of our drilling. And uh, the 43-101 shows that we have 3.2 million tons of indicated and inferred. And we have only to date drilled roughly 10% of all those properties. So. Uh, although we do have a resource, we know it's quite easily expandable because of, of the other properties, which majority of them have geophysics on them, yeah. and we've actually visited them and found graphite at surface. So <laughs> there's not a lot of risk. We know it's there. We yeah, just yeah. got to go in there and, and do some more work on it. And, and also handle it in a more um, uh, cleaner uh, and a more efficient way. I, I was impressed looking at your website last night about the process with graphite to a node material. And, and talk about what you are eliminating with this very progressive uh, procedure. Sure, I mean, there's different, there are different ESG sort of platforms which we're working on. One of them is the fact that it's extremely high grade. Mm -hmm. So when you come right down to it, we're an average grade of about 17%. And what's the rest of the world? Or what, what are pockets of the world? Like two, th five? Th three to six three to seems six. to be about the average. Um, so we're 17. So not only does it give you far better economics, from an ESG friendly platform and carbon footprint reduction, it's much greener as well too, because you have less waste rock to remove. Because right. if you have 
of graphite. Then you got 95% waste rock you got to mm. deal with, right? So we have significantly less waste rock to deal with. And also, because it's at surface, from an economic point of view, your first shovel in the ground, you're actually making money. But you're not removing waste rock, so right. it's cleaner and greener. And what do you also, I found it interesting as a lay person reading about this, but also what you are eliminating, like chemicals, you're eliminating water in the process. Yeah, in one of the processes, we've, we've teamed up with the, another company called Volt Carbon, and uh, they have developed a, a process whereby they can take, essentially, um, the uh, material, graphitic material from the ground, this is ours, yeah. and it's roughly 17%, which means you've got 83% of waste rock that you got to get rid of. Traditionally, that is crushed to about a size like that, and then it is then used with, hit with chemicals and another material to get to uh, a flake size. The anode, which is the negative in a lithium ion battery, mm -hmm. needs to have purified graphite. So what normally is traditionally done is crushing, flotation, a lot of chemicals, which are not very necessarily good for the environment. Right, right. Um, but what, what they've done is they've taken this and they've done this. Eliminating the middle? Is it Min no water, no, no, right. no chemicals have been used on this. This has been done on a, on a pilot stage level, and what we're hoping to do soon is to take this from the lab or the factory and go to our property and do it on a commercial scale. So not only will it be cleaner and greener and ESG f friendlier, right. It's also cost a way lot less. Yeah, it's, so that's it's, so win-win. I, I don't know. Yeah. Any, any a, a pushback on yeah. that? Yeah, normally I don't when you go cleaner and greener, it's like, oh, well, what's that going to cost? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and Tom, you've actually brought a battery as well. Yes, we've been very fortunate. To, to, we have been able to take the air-separated large flake graphite mm -hmm. and make a coin cell lithium-ion battery out of it. Now this is obviously not what's used in the cars, but this right. is the early stages. You create the lithium ion battery, you see if your material is good enough for the anode, and you test it, charge it, kill it, charge it, basically put it through these cycles to see sure. how good it is. Uh, you also brought some other samples, some various uh, samples. Let's talk about what we have here, starting uh, far left. Thank you. Uh, basically what we have here, uh, once again, if you compare graphite to diamonds, the larger the diamond it is, usually the more expensive it is. Right. However, Mother Nature does control two things. Mother Nature controls color and clarity in a diamond. When it comes to graphite, Mother Nature controls the metallurgy. In this case, it's the flake size. Right. So much like a larger diamond is worth more, same thing with larger flakes. So larger flake graphite sells at a premium. So we've got smaller, medium, and large flake here. And, and you can really, I mean, naked eye, you can see this. This doesn't need to be put under a magnifying glass or anything. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's worth significantly more because it's more rare. The uh, majority of the graphite around the world is, is not large flake or jumbo flake, whereas we and our neighbors are 80 to 100, 80% uh, roughly on average large to jumbo size flake graphite, which is quite rare. So not only is it a high grade yeah. at 17%, it's also large to jumbo size. And flake. again, what you said uh, about 17% compared to uh, 2 to 3 to 6%? 3 to, to 6 on average, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, big difference. Tom, tell us about uh, the people behind the scenes, the management. Um, yes, I'm very fortunate in, in working with the group that I have. Uh, they have been responsible for either discovering, selling, and or putting into production 15 mines wow. around the world. And the junior mining space uh, to be honest, it's rare to find groups that have done one, yeah, yeah. let alone been involved in 15. So I'm very fortunate to have surrounded myself with very successful individuals. I don't want to go all gloom, uh, but but again, reading about your company and everything, uh, there was something announced recently uh, in October of 2023. The Chinese government is announced stricter rules on the export of certain categories of graphite. Um, explain the ramifications of that specifically say in Canada and in the States and the West in general? Sure, I mean majority, the, it's not, not a you know, secret, majority of the graphite and animal material does come from China mm -hmm. right now. And um, uh, they, uh, because of that, they have had talked about putting uh, tariffs on it. That was back in October 20th. <laughs> I mean from a, from a graphite company, it was great for us. Right, <laughs> sure. Because sure. We, they just made it less more valuable. Um, but it does make it tougher because the car manufacturers, um, you name it, whoever manufactures batteries suddenly now could face Right. a shortage or a significant cost. Right. And of course, it follows my next question beautifully. How many uh, uh, companies in North America, let's start, how many companies in America are producing graphite? In the Zero. Canada? 
One. One. And it's 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 sort of you know been producing for a while though. So that's one producing graphite mine in all of North America. Are you seeing? Are, are, are is our government and the and the American government are they addressing this? They are um, a little too late, but they are. Um, Benchmark Minerals, who has been banging the drum uh, for quite a while, saying mm -hmm. that we need to increase this because we're North America is reliant and not just North America on on foreign. Um, producers of these minerals have been saying for many many years now and so they said that in 2035 that there will need to be 97 new graphite mines that have to come into production in order to keep up with the demand for lithium-ion batteries used in electric vehicles. Is it 97. No, yeah but you were saying to me did I hear this correctly that what's ironic is that you you can revisit older mines where pulling the graphite out would have been ugh. Yeah. But can you go back now? Can you not? Yeah, yes, you, yes, you can. But a, a majority of those, because in, in the olden days, you would look for something, um, usually something like gold, silver, right. or one of the base metals, something that has some significant value. Graphite traditionally, I mean, it, it didn't have a lot of value. And even when I first got involved in uh, in, in, in this graphite project, the first thing I and I was naive about it as well too. The first thing I said was graphite. You mean like mining for pencils? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I was like, that's not a good selling point, yeah. is it? No, <laughs> shareholders are gonna love that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then 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 my team who evaluated said, no, no, no. Think anodes. Yeah. Think Teslas. And then of course now th that's that's what everybody's talking about. Right. The, the social media, the news, everything you turn on is all about the electrification and getting more of these minerals, particularly from a locally sourced ESG friendly area. So, but back then it was just people thought graphite, they thought golf clubs, fishing rods, yeah, of and pencils. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, understandably, I get yeah. that. Um, can you talk? We're early in the the year. Can you talk about uh, your your goals? What you're looking to do in 2024? Yeah, um, we do have a, um, a resource. Uh, I've indicated and inferred. I say of 3.2 million tons. We're hoping to expand that, and so we will get to the property in a few months. When the, the right now it's not not a, a really good era t a time to work because there's a lot of snow and a lot of uh, uh, very, very cold temperatures yeah, in northern sure. Quebec. Yeah. So we'll go back there in the summertime, uh, or early spring, summer, and do some more work. As I said, we've only really explored a couple of the properties, yet we have another, a couple other areas, particularly one of them is Zone 3, which uh, we acquired recently, and it is, it is a very exciting um, property. It has, a, once again, geophysics work very well in graphite. Graphite conducts electricity, which is why it's used in batteries, right. but it also is, makes it easier to find from the geophysics. So we've this um, zone three we've got has a geophysical anomaly that's 1.4 kilometers long, so it's quite long. It's 200 meters wide. And um, it was drilled about 10 years ago by another company, and they intersected 22 meters of graphite material from the surface, 22 meters down, on an average grade of about 21 percent. Excellent. So I'm not saying the, that whole anomaly is like that, but we know we can easily ex should be able to easily expand the resource because it's already been drilled. A lot of the risk has been taken away from us. So we're going to go back to that zone particularly. It has been a great pleasure to uh, talk to you again, Tom. I, I find this uh, this category utterly fascinating and very, very important, and I'm glad that you're uh, involved in it. Uh, it's uh, Tom uh, Yingling. He is the president and CEO of Green Battery Minerals, Inc. And more information, Tom, greenbatteryminerals.com? Yes. Excellent. Hey, thank you for watching. I'm Jim Gordon with another Small Cap interview. All our interviews are available at smallcapinterviews.com. Thanks for watching.